Deck building is one of Yu-Gi-Oh's biggest challenges to a player. Knowing the format and what staples to play is key to winning in a competitive environment. However, I decided to take on one of Yu-Gi-Oh's biggest deck building challenges. Starting with just three structure decks and a bi-weekly budget of $40, I can only obtain cards through sealed official products. I can't trade, order any singles, or sell the cards I obtain through packs. This is Sealed Only Dinos. Well, it has certainly been a while since I've opened three structure decks. I'm pretty sure the last time I opened three structure decks was with the trap trick structure. This one is seeing a ton of use right now. Currently, I got these as a gift for Christmas, but they're about $12 on TCG player. The budget for this episode was $42.50. A few episodes ago, I saved a little bit and I totally forgot about it. And if you did the math, that means we have a leftover budget of $6.50. We're going to be opening something else with it, but I just I haven't gotten it in the mail and I want to play this deck at locals. Oh God, I... Wow, I did not mean to go all ham on this, but <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, I kind of just destroyed the box there, but we do have a paper play mat. That looks nice. Just like all the rest, though, it's just going to go in my drawer. But here we have our little brick of cards. We only need a few things from this, but boy, are they good. <laughs> if I can find the little thing. Oh, OK, well, hold on. That was kind of easy. Oh, OK, wait, hold on. Hey, there we go. Always struggle with those. We only need a couple things out of this. A lot of the cards in it are very impactful. And honestly, I, I want to play Tri Brigade Fire Kings. So we have a Garunix, a Avatar Kirin, a Rain Ball. I haven't seen this one at all. A Fire King Sanctuary. This card's pretty good. Just a board nuke on summon. Pretty broken if you ask me. Skyburn, pretty crazy quick play. Echelon. Ponix, one of the best starters of the deck. Runix, Barong, Naksha, Kirin. Ooh, okay. I is this off the list? Everyone always gets like scared when the dragon rulers come to like one or two, but honestly, they're not gonna do anything. The new Xyz is good, but I really just don't see them doing anything at all. We have a burner, bear man, a wolf bark, an Ignibizud. An Infernal Flame Emperor? I'm pretty sure this was its own structure deck back in the day, but uh, I mean, I've never had one of these. Looks cool. Next up we have... Okay, so this is one of the cards that we needed. Likely going to be a one of in the main deck. This is a Dinosaur Kaiju. Searchable. Also can be summoned off of Petit Randon if I need a 3000 beater. Really cool addition to the deck and it's definitely going to be going in the main deck of this episode. A The Blazing Mars. That artwork is kind of crazy looking. Bonfire Colossus. That all, wait, this artwork is also crazy looking. This kind of looks like Fire Punch from a uh, uh, Fire Fire Punch. I, I, it's been a while since I read it. I have no idea what the guy's name is. I never finished it, but I thought that series was cool. A Neftis, a Royal Firestorm Guard, Spirit of Flames, a Fencing Fire Ferret, a Firebrand Hymnist. Okay, in common we have Alpha the Master Beasts, also an incredibly good card to pair with Kaijus. I don't know if we pulled any of this from Rarity Collection, but it's uh, if we didn't, we have three of it now. But next up we have, okay, I totally just hit the mic, but we have a Droll and Lockbird. A very essential hand trap in this format, whether it be in main deck or side deck. If our opponent adds something from deck to hand, we can Droll them and stop them from adding anything else for the rest of the turn. It totally stops decks like Fluanderees and Manadium, which Fluanderees we haven't played against recently, but if I play against mana, I don't really have a hand trap for it. Moving on though, we have Onslaught of the Fire Kings, a Circle of the Fire Kings, a Rekindling, ooh, a Fire Formation Tanky, really good card. Dark Hole, I'm pretty sure we had three of this anyways. A Trade-In, oh, that's also pretty good. Herald of the Abyss, we already had multiple copies of this. A Flanville Counter. A Spiritual Fire Art Kurenai. Chain Destruction. Ooh, okay, so this might be, no, actually this is a terrible thrust target, what am I talking about? Probably not gonna be see any play at all. <laughs> okay. This is huge for the side deck. This is the best going first card we can put in the side deck currently. So many times I've lost to Dark Ruler and so many times I've lost to Evenly Matched. Well now, the old man can say no. If I pay half my life points, I can negate and destroy any spell or trap or the summon of a monster. It's just a really powerful card and I'm very happy to have my hands on it. 
Oh, okay, yeah. So we have infinite impermanence in common. Looks weird as hell, if you're asking me. We have one of these from Rarity Collection, but I'd like to have multiple copies. It's a really good hand trap right now. It's very versatile. I like this card a whole lot. We have a Power Sink Stone, a Coach King Giant Trainer, a Diamond Dire Wolf, a Hita the Fire Charmer, a Fire King High Avatar Garunix, and a Fire King Avatar Arvata. Oh, okay. And then here's the island, but this card's insane. Not gonna be playing any of the Fire King stuff though. Uh, we just need uh, play sets of all these. Okay, so I have two more of these bricks, but honestly, uh, I have no idea what I'm building towards when it comes to the deck right now. Comment below if you have a specific variant you wanna see, but I might start going for cards like Logia again with Maximum Gold Eldorado. And I am very much so struggling with finding this thing. Oh, okay, there we go. I don't want to make it a scrap build for the deck. I think the scrap version of Dinos currently is just a little too bricky. So I'm just not going to be going for that uh, currently. If something cool comes out that like prompts me to play it, then I'll definitely go for it. But for now, it's just not something I'm interested in. I could go back to Wild Survivors and pick up a third Ground Xeno, which I think is honestly my best play at this point. Okay, but all together, we have play sets of all of these beautiful cards. In one way or another, all of these are going to be going in the list. Except for one of these common imperms. I mean, I have a secret rare. Why would I play the common? That being said, though, I don't have the other piece of the opening just yet, so I'm going to have to do a jump cut, and I'll see you guys in a moment. Okay, so with the remaining budget of $6.50, I've spent six of it on Ancient Guardians. All we need is Paker Tops. Uh, these are $2 a pack on TCG Player. The leftover budget is just 50 cents. Uh, I don't think that's ever gonna really come up. We might not pull the Paker Tops out of these packs, but it's a good thing they're cheap. I actually have no idea what I'm buying for next episode, so if we don't pull it, I'll just try to get as many packs as possible. But yeah, it's only three packs. Let's get right into it. See if we can get that Paker Tops. A CR one would be pretty nice as well. We have a Dynaster Power, the Mighty Draco Slayer. A Venomanaga. I think I pronounced that right. <laughs> anyway, she's the Deity of Poisonous Snakes. A Sofa Cord Scale. An Ursartic Megabilis. I'm pretty sure we have an Ultra in this pack, considering how many rares I've gone through. I think this archetype's pretty cool. I've seen someone experiment with this on Twitter. But let's see what we have for the Ultra. I, I wasn't expecting to pull one this episode. An Ayers Rock Sunrise and... Oh, okay, it's really towards the back there. Damage equal reptile. And a sulfur cord elegance. Why was, wait, these are at the back of the pack? I thought deck build packs had them near the front. That's, that's weird. Okay, I guess we don't have an ultra. Uh, this card's insane in archetype, by the way. Uh, just uh, draws two, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, add two cards from your pendulum zones to the extra deck and then uh, draw two cards. That's, that's free as hell. Yeah, obviously no pinker tops in that pack, sadly. Uh, hopefully we can pull one. I don't want to just open some terrible uh, packs of this set. We have a Musica, a Skullmeister. That's actually a hand trap. I could put that to the side. We have a Rise of the Snake Deity, a Light Serpent. Okay, we have a pink. There, there we go. That's all I really wanted. <laughs> uh, a second one would be very nice and a CR one would be even nicer, but I'll take the, the one searchable copy for now. We have an Agdodag, a Flogos. Never seen this name before. Uh, it's kind of funny. Next up, we have a Do Sulfacord Cutia. Okay, last pack of Ancient Guardians. Uh, just not really expecting much. A second page would be nice, but it looks like we might have to open some more uh, next episode. We have another Musica, another Skullmeister, another Rise of the Snake Deity, a Light Serpent. Okay, a second picker tops. Uh, there we go. Don't have to open the set anymore. It's actually perfect. We uh, we got it in one in this episode. <laughs> we are under the new ban list. Obviously, it's past the new year, so we can go ahead and play this right away. But next up, we have another Flogo. So this is the same exact pack, I think. Uh, if we get a Cutia, that's gonna be crazy. Nope, we got an Angelica. Okay, uh, very short second part of the opening but i mean these are four very playable cards uh this is format dependent probably not going in but these are good definitely going in the deck uh probably both in the main deck if i'm being honest i just got to find out like what i'm slotting in for it 
Okay, so this episode, while I did go to a locals, I got absolutely destroyed. So instead of narrating that, I'd like to take this time to talk about the series, where it's going, and the inevitable end of the series. Currently, the goal of the series is to win a locals. I planned on going to bigger events once that happened, but now some bigger events got announced that I'd like to go to. On March 23rd, there's a regional in Greenville, South Carolina that I plan on going to. In addition to that, in April, there are two more events in the form of a regional in Richmond, Virginia on the 14th, and a YCS in Raleigh, North Carolina on the 20th and 21st. My personal goal for the series now is to either get my invite or top that YCS. If I don't achieve either of those, that's fine, and I may just end the series there depending on what events are announced at that time. This seems like the most natural conclusion to me, but it means we only have a certain amount of episodes to go before the deck needs to be up to standard. That number being 6 episodes before the YCS, not including this one. The good news is that we don't have that many more cards required to play the deck competitively. Here's a list from Reversal YGO's channel. He makes good dino deck profiles pretty consistently, so go check him out if you don't know him already. His list is what I'm currently building toward, and outside of hand traps and staples, we only need two real engine pieces left to pull in the form of Logia and the third ground Xeno. Outside of those, there are six extra deck pieces that would be nice to pull, and two that I feel like are absolutely required. The two cards that I feel like are absolutely required are Cross Sheep and Secure Gardener. Secure Gardener lets us get Link Rebo in the grave easier for our standard combo, and Cross Sheep lets me play through Nib during ground Xeno lines. The other six cards just make it easier to OTK or break boards, with those cards being Lil Knight, the two G Golem Link 2s, Axis Code, Typhon, and Dugaras. Some of these are easier to pull than others, so I'm probably going to prioritize those in the coming episodes. Overall, this means that the deck is 86% complete, so the clock is ticking before the end of the series. And if you'd like to keep up with it, make sure to like and subscribe. The channel hit 500 subscribers recently, and I'm now a YouTube partner, meaning you can now become a channel member. I haven't filled out all the emote slots yet, and the first two I made are really silly. So if you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments what you guys would like to see for the remaining emotes. But with that, my name is Gokazemi, thank you for 500, and I'll see you guys next time for a brand new episode of Sealed Only Dinos. See ya!